dames en heren, ik sta bij een astronaut. En dan ben ik altijd aandoenlijk enthousiast. Uh, en niet zomaar bij een astronaut, ik sta hier bij uh, meneer Eijhard, uh, een ESA astronaut, French astronaut. Yes. And, and this, for me, this was a very exciting thing to hear. You have been uh, both on a Soyuz and on a space shuttle, and you have been both on the Mir space station and on the ISS space station. Yes. I think this gave you a, a unique view in, in, in these completely different technologies, because I'm one of those enthusiasts who watches the launches and the landings. And the difference from, from a space shuttle and a Soyuz in what you see is so different. So what, what is the difference when you're actually inside of these two vehicles? Um, well, first the size, of course. The Soyuz is a very small vehicle. So you have just three people and you are really squeezed inside. So it's, a, it's really, really a small vehicle. Uh, the shuttle is much bigger. You have seven people on board. Unfortunately, when I flew in the shuttle, I was in the mid-deck. So I didn't have any external view. But if you're flying on the upper deck, then of course you have windows. And uh, this is probably the most fantastic thing you want to experience when you launch in space. But unfortunately, I was uh, not in the upper deck. And, uh, so most of the time when you're launching, especially in the Soyuz today, you don't see anything in the beginning. So you just feel the acceleration, and, uh, but you don't have any external it is the feeling as overwhelming as I would imagine it to be the first time you, you see that you are actually in space? It's, um, it's not unknown, especially for pilots, because you have accelerations mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it's moderate acceleration, I would say, between uh, one and a half and three Gs, mm -hmm. no more during the launch. Uh, but it's lasting a long time, that's what is amazing. So you're accelerating, accelerating during eight and a half minutes or more. And, uh, and this is something that, which is really unusual even for a pilot. Landing a space shuttle would be a dream for many pilots. Ah, yeah, it was just uh, smooth. Any, you don't feel anything. That's really? what amazing me, really, yeah. compared to the, the Soyuz return and, and, uh, and landing. In the, in the shuttle it was like a commercial airplane. Okay. You, don't, you don't feel anything. Your, your stay in, in Mir space station mm -hmm. was, of course, before the ISS space station. So when I, well, the, the difference between the two will, will not only be a difference in nations, but also in time and, and technology, I would imagine. Yes, definitely. It was two different eras. And, and that's, and I feel lucky that I had the chance to, uh, to uh, be involved in both mm -hmm. the Mir space station and the Mall station was also internationalized, like an international space station, but it was really a Russian station. And uh, of course, um, all the, the equipment you had for, for uh, I mean, entertaining or communicating for the astronauts was very different from what we have today. Mm -hmm. In the ISS, you can uh, make phone calls, you can do email, you can even be on Facebook or, or Twitter today, and, and so that's... Uh, uh, communicating is much easier than it used to be on the Mir space station. Yeah. Can you watch television on the ISS? Yes, you can watch television. Yeah, <laughs> of course, yeah. They are. They have internet connections, so you can watch programs. Any Belgian watch. channels on the ISS? I'm sure they can. Okay. <laughs> what do you see? You have been on Mir. You have been on the ISS. What do you see as the next big step in long-term manned space flight? Well, it's, it's hard to tell. I mean, if we. It depends on what we call long term, but you know the space station, the uh, International Space Station should be uh, there for another maybe 15 years, mm -hmm. we, we don't know exactly, but probably 15 years, so which is already a, not a long term, but mid term. So in the meantime, we, we have to find out what we will do after, and this is what, what is being discussed. So the, at the moment, of course, the ultimate objective would be Mars, but you know, in my opinion, it's very hard. There is a lot to be done before we can go to Mars. So I, I see, you know, some stepping stones before before we, mm -hmm. we go to Mars. And uh, there is so much work to do to improve everything. We were talking a lot about life support systems today. And uh, we have to do a lot before we can send people uh, safely uh, for long duration missions without any logistics, without any way to mm -hmm. save them or to rescue them. So. Uh, all this will be very interesting in the coming years, I'm sure. I will follow it from the first seat. Thank you very much. It was an honor uh, and a pleasure. And all the Thanks best. for your invitation. Yes, was, all the best in great. your future work. Thank you. Thank you.